Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women as ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today embodies diverse facets of creativity. He was born Sampuran Singh. He grew up to be a um, filmmaker, a scriptwriter, a poet, short story writer. He plays the sitar. He has won more than five national awards, 17 filmfare trophies, a Sahitya Academy Award. Yesterday he was awarded the Padma Bhushan. A man indeed of many parts. I'm delighted to welcome Gulzai Zab. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. These many facets uh, of your uh, creativity, mm -hmm. uh, how do they coexist for the, you? Uh, actually, you, you have added a little too much. Otherwise, one does all these things in a normal life also. <laughs> <laughs> one listens to music, one listens to um, bhajans at home, and one looks into you paintings. Play, you, you, you play the sitar, you have mm. got a Sahitya Academy Award as, uh, you know, for, for your writing, you have scripted uh, more than 60-odd films, you have directed um, 17 odd. So partly because it's a profession with me, <laughs> I had to take up to some profession or the other. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the filmmaking, of course, embodies the writing part also. That's why. Uh, rest are much are out of curiosity also, and to know and to so start conversing with music and start conversing with the paintings and colors, and uh, they all fall apart of one, um, or rather, I should say, one form of art merges into the other, and the other um, into another. I mean, poetry has colors, and mm -hmm. colors have poetry in them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how it is. And so for someone who embodies so many facets of, of creative expression, mm -hmm. uh, what is that creative impulse for you? Is it, you use the word conversation, is it conversation, is it, is it catharsis, is it uh, the need to understand or to give it form and order and structure? Mm -hmm. What is the impulse? Uh, it's like this. I, I don't think I can really uh, define it for finality with finality why just as you can't define life with mm -hmm. finality one can't say exactly what is that m makes you write or makes you sing or makes you mm -hmm. uh, play sitar or mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's uh, just being aware of your own self what is happening to you the life which keeps on brushing you all the time mm -hmm. and a few moments they stay back with you the rest passes by I think it is an urge to express that moment, how you reacted mm -hmm. to it, which includes your environment, which includes your social relationships and personal relationships and uh, everything included. I mean, that's how you live your life, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, just how life brushes it uh -huh. and where and when, if one's antennas are open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one has to be aware of oneself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this process of uh, awareness of self then gets translated into a process of communication. Mm, that communication right. has to be received. That's and right. obviously in, in each of these forms, the reception is mm. of a different kind. Mm. That's right. Uh, That's right. You know, film is as much industrial mm. product as it is personal self-expression. Right. So have you had trouble reconciling no, these two I, I think, uh, first of all, I agree, agree with you Gee. with this expression that it's finally when you try to express yourself, it is the communication because you are trying to communicate to another person than yourself. And uh, every medium has its own limitations also and its advantages also. Mm -hmm. uh, film, of course, being a very commercial medium, you have to take care of uh, how to talk to masses, how to talk to a big group of people, mm -hmm. 500 people sitting in a dark room and you are talking mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to convey it to them or not. Mm -hmm. But then you are aware that you want to convey what you have felt mm -hmm. and not what they are looking for. <laughs> and if you can create that communication, I think that's, that's the success of your own expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that, that, that's why I never, never blame the audience. Uh -huh. It's not their failure, it is the failure of the maker always. Gee, gee. You know, at this stage uh, of, your, uh, of your success and, and creativity, mm -hmm. You're probably able to, you know, sort of dictate and decide what is it that you want to say it and, mm. and, and, and say it, bringing to bear all your talents and, mm. and, and internal processes. Mm. Uh, but that may not always have been uh, the case, you know, when mm. you're writing a script. There's a producer, he wants to make the film sell and then to make it work. So to what degree have you felt, say, let's start with as a writer, mm. independent in the process of writing the scripts that you That's write right. for the film? Oh, really? 
uh, while you are trying to communicate, uh, well, there is no dictation as such, but Gee. you feel few things which you can't share with them Gee. as a mass Gee. and which you want to share only with communicate to your own other self. That's where poetry comes in. Mm -hmm. Poetry is, uh, is personal mm -hmm. also and yet you are relating it to others. I mean, you do publish your poems. So, but it's completely yourself. I mean, that's the advantage in poetry, or writing poetry, or writing literature, mm -hmm. because there's nothing else involved. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is involved in it. Mm -hmm. That's why I always feel the, the sunset which I have picturized in a film mm -hmm. is not as complete as my sunset in the poem because that's totally personal exactly and I don't have to change a lens for it. I don't have to mm, tell the cameraman which mm -hmm. angle to mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly as you have felt it. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a self-expression. Mm -hmm. At times mm, other mediums come to your help. Mm -hmm. You want to express a color um, which you do describe and or do make people feel it mm -hmm. or put it across. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where painting or film comes in. Mm -hmm. so I think it is just an urge mm -hmm. and a compulsion that happens inside you mm -hmm. that you're trying to communicate. Do you find that uh, some forms mm -hmm. uh, are more appropriate to particular feelings mm -hmm. that you want to communicate and express? I think so. So I think so. What, what kind exactly, of as I as I said, I, I just took this analogy on this example of a sunset. G. Mm. I may not be able to totally express myself in the film mm -hmm. how I felt about the sunset unless some words come in mm -hmm. and the moment words come in it becomes literature then mm -hmm. then it's another part of it's not only an image it's not only a visual there's something else also so sometimes single form of art sometimes two and sometimes more than two also and film of course includes more than seven arts, seven, eight arts in it. Mm -hmm. In so fact, your fiction has in your writing, uh, and, I, and I have to confess, I've only had a limited exposure to it, uh, has an enormous quality of brevity. Uh, you, you, know, you seem to use words with great restraint. Mm. I'm not conscious of it, but Did I you? think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it is there. I'm not consciously made an effort uh -huh. to do that. Uh -huh. But a uh, few things unsaid are says m say much more uh -huh. and by saying it actually you limit it uh -huh. because you start drawing a boundary uh -huh. Uh -huh. when you speak of a uh, of an abstract expression Gee. to something I can't often give you an example uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. but uh, mm, the moment you say more you have drawn a boundary Correct. of your imagination. Uh -huh. So I think I limit the imagination of my reader uh -huh. or the onlooker also. Uh -huh. Whereas if I say less, I leave it to the imagination of the other person so that the other person can also identify with uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. And that happens in poetry. Uh -huh. But you can analyze all this only after doing it, uh -huh. not that you think of this uh -huh. and then write. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I'm afraid uh, that you know, this, this exchange is circumscribed by words mm. and by conversation. But we'll be right back after a short break. Please don't go away. Mm. Welcome back to my continuing conversation with what I des describe, feel, as the embodiment of creativity, Gulzar Sahib. Uh, how did Sampuran Singh become Gulzar? What is the story? Uh, <laughs> Gulzar is a pen name which I took up. Uh -huh. and. Uh, with all addition and subtraction in life, I think I'm left only with that one name, Gulzar, and I like being called Gulzar, and like being written and identified only as Gulzar. Mm -hmm. It doesn't define any any um, promise, any caste, any religion, anything. Mm -hmm. I think just Gulzar makes me more comfortable because mm, I think that's complete by itself. <laughs> <laughs> was there an impulse that, uh, you know, as, as a lot of people have when they start writing or start doing creative work, at uh, the need for anonymity? 
uh, or, or a more, um, as you uh, said, a, a neutral name which didn't you know, reflect nee, it, your it background? Don't, I mean, that all this you think much later that it, uh, how does your name work or ji, something. Ji, Not ji. that one starts with, started at the school level, ji, ji. started writing at that. So I was so, um, saying it. Uh, I try to speak in Hindi sometimes. Ji, ji, oh, please. <laughs> sometimes you feel that it is not a horizon. It is not open in front ji, of ji, ji, ji. You start traveling and then you start seeing the horizon, ji, horizon ji, after ji, horizon. Ji, ji. So I started just as uh, uh, Baithbazi, you know what it is. Baithbazi is Antakshri. Mm -hmm. We used to have that in school. And I used to mug up couplets, mug up couplets to make a reply on ch, on ch, or b, or b. And uh, those couplets which I used to mug up, they remained with me somewhere. I, I started understanding them, not for sheer words, or not for a sheer reply of Antakshri. And when poetry starts staying with you, you know, it starts expanding. It doesn't doesn't stay, at, stay down in you only as couplets or words. Its meaning starts flowering out. And uh, I think that's what started fascinating me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first book or first poem, which I should say, or first time a book made an impression on me from where I, uh, when I look back, I think I turned to poetry from there, was Tagore. I read Tagore's translation in one of his books called Gardner. And the poem I still remember, his name was Mali. Some hall, somewhere, I don't know what moment it is, but when I look back, I think perhaps that was the turning point for me. So was there a sort of an, an, an influence that was in some ways decisive uh, of, of, of the Bengal heritage in some ways. Mm, uh, I think on you, so. I think so because you had a after that, that uh, after that incident in my school time, in my school age, I started looking for more books of Tagore, which brought me to Sharad Chandar, which brought me to other Bengali authors, and uh, that stayed with me for a long time. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm more of a Bengali even today. <laughs> <laughs> what draws you to that uh, that that culture and that sensibility? Mm. I really can't uh, define it in so many words, but uh, the literature brought the uh, culture of Bengal with it, and the sensitivity along with it, and the emotional expression which I, first, not that it doesn't exist in other languages, it does in uh, other languages also, but in Bengali literature. One uh, particular element which I think, which has remained in my writing also is the nostalgia, mm -hmm. which I think Bengali literature is full of it. It's not just in your writing, it's also sort of in your film and in much of your work, it mm. translates to this, you know, to the use of flashback, yes. of in some ways juxtaposing mm. the past with the mm. present. That's right. That I think it has become a way of narrating a story for me. And you are right that uh, it works in that uh, flashback, the nostalgia, remembering things in the past and how the past works. And no, no present is without a past behind it. Mm -hmm. no, not even crying for mother is not without, mm -hmm. without a past behind it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cry, mm -hmm. um, you knowing the kindness and the love from the mother, that's why you cry for it when you lose your mother. So I think every moment, everything has a past behind it. That remains a fact. But once again, I'm sorry to repeat myself, that it's not a thought out plan. I have also to study myself as much as <laughs> you are trying to explain <laughs> me to me. <laughs> so, um, I see that uh, it has become a way of narration for me. When I start talking or when I start narrating, flashbacks come natural to me. But is that sense of uh, nostalgia mm -hmm. uh, inherently pleasant and, and pleasurable? Because you know the philosophies tell mm -hmm. you we ought, you know, the need and the imperative to live in the present, mm -hmm. and in some ways, you know, the, the past is seen as baggage. But uh, you see it as illuminating, mm -hmm. as inspiring, as liberating, as, as mm -hmm. what? Past is. Uh, I wouldn't agree. It's a, it's a baggage, really. 
but past is the one that that's your punji also that's your capital on which you build up your present mm -hmm. towards the future mm -hmm. because if you don't have that capital i don't know how would you take a step further mm -hmm. if if you don't carry it with you so mm, i won't cut it out like that mm -hmm. and there is a uh, element of sadness it, there is a element of tragedy in it there is an element but then mm, that's always much more poetic and much more charming mm -hmm. even in personal life mm -hmm. while sitting or while talking at home among brothers sisters you always start talking of when we, i was in school or when i was a little mm -hmm. or when the sister tells you when you were small you used to do like this mm -hmm. and past is, a, is something that you start enjoying once again mm -hmm. in present there's nothing but you're walking right. you're trotting on mm -hmm. future is fascination of imagination mm -hmm. i mean you don't know what will happen but one tries to imagine that so what do the you the present uh, that way remains only very drab come <laughs> to think of it you're just walking <laughs> So what do you what do you imagine uh, uh, in terms of a future for yourself? What do you see yourself doing ten years from now? Mm, then no, uh, I, I I don't think I have any any plans in personal life which I can talk of my future, but I do think of the future. For example, in science fiction, for example, cosmos fascinates me a lot, and cosmos appears a lot in my poetry, particularly the recent poetry, and. Uh, now mm, since we have found the mm, the tenth planet sedna mm -hmm. so i am still looking forward to know a little more about sedna uh -huh. so that's the new planet which we have found recently uh -huh. so future is that sort of a study or what it will be like the way and particularly in, in field of communication mm -hmm. so it's it's more of a imagination and fascination that will come mm -hmm. but, uh, that's because of the past which i have <laughs> <laughs> well we'll come right back and, and and talk about the future with gulzar sahab don't go away mm. welcome back to my continuing conversation with gulzar sahab mm. we were talking about uh, the cosmos and and, and the future and, mm. and, and and sort of an expansive uh, um, eternal growing future you know, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. refer to that um, you know but, but coming down to sort of you know the your use of poetry Mm. to to project this to mm. reach out into mm. the future yeah. can you give us an example or a, a, a sample um, you have to translate it too <laughs> uh, but that uh, because my mm, listeners must be must have realized by now how Gee. bad i am in english <laughs> well, and, and how <laughs> bad i am in <laughs> hindi <laughs> <laughs> since you have put me in this limitation of Gee. english so mm, i puri tarah se express nahi kar pa raha hu lekin the same time just say my for example there's a poem g I know this dwarf son of our galaxy. It's called dwarf son. Mona Suraj kaha jata hai se dwarf son. Science mein actually fiction mein naam yehi hai. Science mein naam yehi hai iska. Hamare Suraj ka. To ye kahi na kahi aakar ye bhuj jaane wala. And I think of that time. Lekin a poet's hope continues. At a ki. ये थोड़े से करोड़ों सालों में सूरज की आग बुझेगी जब अब थोड़े से फ्यू बिलियन ऑफ ईयर्स आई कॉन्ट एक्सप्रेस विदाउट सेइंग थोड़े से करोड़ों सालों में सूरज की आग बुझेगी जब और जब कोई जमीन उभरेगी जब कोई चांद ना निकलेगा और राख उड़ेगी चारों तरफ मध्यम खाक स्त्री रोशनी में दैट मरकी डार्कनेस और एक जले कोयले की तरह ये टुकड़ा ये जमीन का भटकेगा kind of हाँ। मैं सोचता हूँ उस वक्त अगर कागज पे लिखी एक नज्म कहीं उड़ते उड़ते सूरज में गिरे और भाग सूरज फिर से जलने लगे सो आई आई एम होपिंग शायद कोई किसी पेपर पे लिखी हुई सम पोएम विच इज फ्लाइंग अराउंड एस रे एन मे फॉल इन टू दन एन मे स्टार्ट sun may start burning once again uh -huh. so the poet so uh, doesn't end with that uh, scientific prediction uh -huh. so this is this is what so is there sort of you know implicit in that is sort of an an aspiration in some sense mm -hmm. for immortality mm -hmm. for eternity ji 
So, you know, what, what, what do you see? Do you see yourself reincarnating? Do you see yourself in the next life? No, no not, about, not uh, in those very terms, okay, so reincarnation, but that's a fact that, uh, I mean, that's when we say, um, Carl Sagan, for example, Jee. explains the Nataraja in his uh, book called Cosmos. And it's very interesting that we are not aware of all those symbols of Nataraja, which Carl Sagan all the way explained it for us from NASA. And that, and when he says that life will be reborn, the Hindu religion or Hindu um, you know, philosophy tells us about this. And he says there's a little mistake uh, in taking it. It's not uh, Gopal Das which died will Gopal Das will be born. He means the cell, the cell of life, will not finish on this globe, on this earth, mm -hmm. on this planet called Earth. Mm -hmm. So, and it will continue from one planet to another, or to another planet. Mm -hmm. But the the process of life is eternal. Mm -hmm. That will not. So, when you say of um, our government, our government doesn't mean that I will die so and I will be born again. So it only means that if even if life, entire life, comes to an end on this planet, it will be reborn because the cell will not die. So that, that's mm -hmm. what it leads to. In, so in, in, in your writing, in your mm -hmm. persona, in your work, in your image, you have so embodied uh, the notion of love, of, mm -hmm. of romantic love mm -hmm. in some ways. Uh, how important has that continued to be for you uh, as an emotion to, to cherish, to nurture, uh, in, in, in perhaps positive and affirmative ways, mm -hmm. not just the lack of it, but in terms of its... Blossoming. Ma'am, I'm <laughs> been, uh, eternally and permanently and uh, uh, in love with this species called a human being, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't, when I say I'm in love all the time, Gee. I don't mean a girl. And I don't <laughs> mean a, so it is this species of human being which is very beautiful. The way it reacts, the way it reacts on different moments differently. And I think that's the charm of life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That you can't predict life. Mm -hmm. It is so spontaneous. It keeps on happening. Mm -hmm. Everything keeps on happening. Mm -hmm. And that's the most beautiful part. And that's knowing that you this, you're going to end this life. This life is going to end one day. Mm -hmm. You still live with all its intensity mm -hmm. and its charm mm -hmm. only because of the unpredictability of life. Mm -hmm. Isn't it charming by itself? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm in love with. Mm -hmm. And that's why you love human beings. Uh -huh. That's you love another human being. Uh -huh. Rest is biological. Uh -huh. <laughs> but this is what it is. Uh -huh. And that's knowing life. Uh -huh. And that's fascinating. And that's what makes you mm, write. Uh -huh. That's what makes you sing. That's what makes you make films. Uh -huh. That's what makes you keep sharing. Uh -huh. In, in, in much of your articulation, you have also talked about uh, how important uh, music is. You've talked about mm. color and many facets mm. of it. Uh, you know, sort of you use the rhythms of music in, 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 in many ways, uh, mm. in, 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 in the film that you do, uh, the, you know, the, the quality of alliteration, of intonation, and the poetry uh, mm. that you write. Uh, you also play uh, the sitar every morning. Mm. So, Meghna, your daughter I tells us in the book. Uh -huh. I could not continue till a friend of mine the famous singer Bhupi, he told me, if you want to continue Siddharth further, you have to start singing, learn vocal. And I was scared from there. But all the same, I am fond of that particular instrument. And you will see it appears in my music and in the film again and again. And as far as music is concerned, I think it's in even the chanting of shloka, the azan, that's very musical. It's a very, very musical. I mean, that's why it has come down mm -hmm. in the centuries to us. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, music exists all around you, mm -hmm. if you are aware. Mm -hmm. Even the silent halo that appears early in the morning before dawn, mm -hmm. it's very musical. Mm -hmm. Music, I think, is a, a little more... Uh, writing is perhaps a little mm -hmm. easier art than music, because you have saath swar hai aapke paas. 
या बारह कह लीजिए हनी कोमल टी और मिला के साथ में लेकिन टू कन्वर्स विद इन ओनली दो ट्वेल्व साउंड एंड एक्सप्रेस वेरी बिग थिंग आई थिंक म्यूजिक इज मच बिगर एंड आर्ट and uh, more difficult and that's why i can't do it <laughs> <laughs> well, you know you've talked about you know we talked about the cosmos and and and, and what takes rebirth and and the processes and you're far from it but do you think about death do you fear death mm, not exactly not exactly as we we know that mm -hmm. otherwise it's a very ly lyrical thing mm -hmm. and i think tagore once again he made that so lyrical in his poems i uh, if you have seen my film called uh, not my film sorry it is rishida's film i have only written it ji in that song mm -hmm. and there's a poem in it when anand dies and rishida had asked me ki i need a poem here and ek nazm ka vaada hai milegi mujhse so na dhoop ho na chhao ho aur as that poem ke is kavita ka vaada hai jo mujhe milne wali hai that kavita is death mm -hmm. that's how i look at that thought. you used this image when you were giving us this poem uh, of you know this image of uh, of the future uh, of this poem that's written and that falls into the sun and then the yeah. sun gets yeah. light again yeah. uh, so d d d what would you like the future uh in the, you to be remembered as as that poet who wrote that poem that went and relit the sun um no i mean just remember me i think <laughs> <laughs> just remember me just remember me or if i am capable to remind you of myself <laughs> but i think the dominant part remains of a poet Ji. but not that i mm, want to dictate anything and remember me i have not even worked towards that <laughs> but i am with all my relationships like i should put it like this in in a in a family you are a brother you are a father you are a son you are a husband and all those relations you live together not separately my relation with the society and my relation but all that i do whether i write poetry or write films or it all belongs to me and i belong to all of them well we shall continue to celebrate <laughs> that thank you very much thank this you. has been a great honor <laughs> and a great you. privilege thank, thank you. you very much <laughs>